thank you all for being out. Will you join me for prayer as we stand? Follow me silently in our opening prayer. Oh, surely I have turned myself to thee trying to be upright, to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheist. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death is all for Allah. No associate has he. This am I commanded. I am of those who submit. O oh, Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord. And I am thy servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my fault, so grant me protection against my fault, for none grants protection against fault but thou, and guide me to the best of morals, for none guides to the best of morals but thou, and turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn from me the evil and the indecent morals but thou. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful and make we the true followers of Muhammad successful. As thou didst make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. And O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. I mean. You may be seated. In the name of Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Fad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, we forever thank Almighty God for coming as it was prophesied and predicted that he would come. We believe the man who came and found his servant in what was called Black Bottom Detroit is the one that the prophet saw and predicted would come in the end times of this present world and civilization that we are in. And we believe that he has made himself known in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. We cannot thank him enough for finding one among us, one worthy enough, one obedient enough, pliant enough to become a 100% convert to him and as the scripture predicted, the Son of Man would be raised up uh, as the serpent of the wilderness was raised up, according to the words of Jesus. And we thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a convert that's raised now as the exalted Christ and Mahdi, the Christ figure of the Muslim world. But I never met the honorable Elijah Muhammad, and certainly I never met the man that raised him in Detroit, Michigan. But between the two of them, they have produced a servant for us, grace for us, mercy for us, embodied in a human being, right. because it was through this one, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that he would get all of his people. And so we are thankful for that great servant, student, and apostle of theirs. He is our leader, teacher, and guide today, the preacher of freedom, justice, and equality, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so it is in their names that we humbly um, welcome you here to Mosque Number 12, which is just a branch of our headquarter mosque right there in Chicago, Mosque Mariam. And many uh, are tuned in to Mosque Mariam from NOI.org and they can pull it in from their homes, their phones, their workplaces, and all on this Sunday morning uh, there in Chicago, Illinois, where our chief national staff preaches from. We are out in the field in Philadelphia, mosque number 12, is one of the mosques that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has established in the country. And so we always welcome our people out, particularly people of color, people who have been oppressed, people who have been misguided, people who are under the hood of falsehood. Uh, we invite you to mosque number 12, but not just to hear a preaching, but to invite you to a program that can make you a match for what we are teaching. Because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan reminds us that teaching alone won't change us. Teaching may want you to make a change, but the force that brings change is method and programs. And so we invite you to the program of the Nation of Islam. And as we are a product of the process, we bear witness that after uh, crossing the intersection of life, 
with the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Though we have not fully what God intends us to be, we are much improved from what uh, we were when his word found us. So thank Almighty God for where you are and stop worrying about where you haven't got to yet because if you just take a peep over your shoulder, you will see that you are a better person than the one you were before you heard the voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, we, we're going to have speakers for you today because this is a witness-bearing session. As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a star witness for the defense. Come on, come on. And you know, when you got a star witness, you know, people know if we could just keep him from even getting to court and taking the witness stand, the testimony will never take place. And without the testimony taking place, they can't make their case. So if a law raises a witness of his self, from among our people, then he knows that he is obligated to give protection for that witness. Come on, come on. So we could say that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is in a witness protection program. Is that right? And the witness protection program means that he doesn't need to carry a gun to protect himself, but you gotta bear witness with no gun. And he got enemies with gun that no bullet got Farrakhan's name on it. And that means that there's a force there protecting him. You know, you can't see the force, but you see the manifestation of it that Farrakhan is still alive. They poured more radiation in his body than has ever been in any human being. He had to have what is called pelvic exoneration. And that means he had to be opened up with everything taken out, reconstructed, put back in. And he's still with us. People have died from less. But the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has been at the door of death. Only the door of death, there's no grave site with his name on it. And this infuriates the enemy that they find out that when the sun rose this morning, Farrakhan is still alive. And we know that if Farrakhan is still alive, Mosque number 12 is still open, bearing witness to Farrakhan and the God and the messenger that Farrakhan was made for. So we are thankful for your presence today, and we invite you out to open your mind, open your heart. Even if you hear the truth and you don't accept it, know that all ground does not accept seed. But that doesn't mean something's wrong with the seed. Something could be wrong with the ground. Maybe it's not fertile enough to receive the truth yet. But if you just keep coming and keep listening, because fertilizer is made from waste material because God is the master ecologist. He can take a dead leaf and use it as fertilizer for a new tree that's growing. Are you following me now? God doesn't waste anything. So we learn not to live a wasteful life like this world has trained uh, its subjects. And so you can hear in the land now that wasting things has already translated into new life coming on the planet. People are out now and they've grown hostile and they're beginning to fight each other over the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. And, you know, the scripture says that Pharaoh called his magicians. Magicians is another word for presidential cabinet. A magician is one who engages in the careful study of the systematic use of tricks. And so we are taught that we are living under uh, the guise of what is called tricknology. Are you following? Ology is the productive suffix that means now the production of a thing. And so we are, we are uh, the victims of trichnology, and they, they put forth the argument that a woman should decide what she wants to do with her body. And that should be the case because the men that are trying to tell women what to do with their body, let's face it, these men have not made a world that protects women. You have not honored women. I ain't talking about just black women. You don't even honor your own white woman. 
She's the one started the feminist movement. The feminist movement is just the white woman pointing to the world saying, my man is mistreating me. My man wants me to stay in the kitchen. My man won't, uh, he'll pay himself more, but pay me less for the same work and the same job. He'll tell me he wants me to have babies, but he's making a world that's unsafe for those babies. He wants to use those babies to go to war so he can prosecute uh, warfare on other nations so he can feed his own greed. So they are upset because they want to kill life. Let me show you something because Pharaoh said let's deal wisely with them. Let's not deal foolishly with them because they're growing in numbers. We got them on welfare but they're still making babies. We got them on low paying jobs, but they're still making babies. They're graduating now into colleges. And so we got to cut off the grants so that they can be saddled with student loan debt. So even though they make more money, we're taking the money. Are you following me from, from what little bit they're bringing in now? So they don't have a quality of life much better than the poor folks that never went to college. Because the money that they're commanding is already being taken and siphoned off. Are you following me now? So now they plan a plan. Let's kill the male. Let's spare the female. And the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches in his book, How to Eat to Live. This was really a plot to cut off the increase of the black nation. By doing that, family, you kill the male, you can't make another child because the female is left prey to the men of other societies. Are you following me now? They plan this plan, but Allah planned a plan. And Allah is the best of planners. So when they set up death for our babies by killing the male, sparing the female, it turns out their female wants to kill the male. And their female wants to go to abortion clinics and they want the right to say that I don't want to carry this child a term. I don't want this child to be born and walk this planet. I want to kill this child. Are you following me now? There's a lot more science, but I can't go into all of it. But Pat Buchanan says this, the West is dying. Its nations have ceased to reproduce and their populations have stopped growing. And they have begun to shrink, not since the Black Death that carried off one third of Europe's um, 14th century population has there been a graver threat to the survival of Western civilization. So Roe v. Wade, which allowed for nearly 40 million abortions to take place, they're cutting off the Caucasian's ability to increase his numbers. By bringing people of color into the land and our numbers are increasing and he's shrinking, the population profile is changing in America. This has been pointed out by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because this is the plan of Almighty God. He has set his hand against the womb of the people who have oppressed us and ruled over us for the last 400 years. Today, in 17 European countries, there are more burials than births, more coffins than cradles. This is the real concern why they want to get rid of Roe v. Wade. They're not trying to save you, black woman. They know that if the white woman doesn't have a law that will stop her from killing life from coming on the planet, pretty soon they're going to shrink into disappearance. I go further to show that Pat Buchanan says, as, a, as the drop-off in the birth rate began in the mid-60s, this is the site that we should excavate to discover the causes of this Teutonic shift in attitude of American and Western women away from having children. What ideas did the boomers bring to maturity and what ideas did they absorb in college? See. We are against abortion in the nation of Islam, but there are exceptions. Some people think that 
We don't want a woman to kill new life that is coming in her. But I take you to the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You don't mind hearing from him, do you? On the subject because he warned about Roe v. Wade. See, we don't believe in, 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 in um, birth control. We believe in self-control. You know, don't, don't even think of having a baby until you're ready to commit yourself to a man. And a man should not be laying down with a woman until he's committed to that woman beyond the bed. Are you following now? That's not birth control. That's self-control. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan says society should not promote abortion. He said this is equal to the promotion of murder and recreational sex when the recreational aspect of sex should be special and reserved for those who have made the proper commitment. However, however, I am not in favor of letting the product of rape, the product of incest, to come to term. So don't 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 go around saying Farrakhan don't he he he's against all abortions. He's got exceptions. Huh? Abortion is justified in these cases along with those instances where the mother's health is at risk. That's reasonable. Because in the Quran Allah sends the believer to reasonable obedience. You don't need to obey something that's unreasonable uh, and not in agreement with the nature that you are in. A woman uh, is uh, attacked by a man that she doesn't want, that she doesn't know. He overpowers her, strips her garments from her, forces himself in her. Are you following now? The minister said an act like that murders the essence of a woman. And when the essence of a woman is murdered, he said the only repair is the God that gave her his essence. Are you following? Because the man was created from a single being and the woman was created from a single being like him. So the Holy Quran teaches us. So he said unless God intervenes in that woman's life, after the act of rape that that woman without the essence of God alive in her could never give another man what a woman was created to be able to give a man. Are you following me now? So it takes God's intervention. But if you look at a whole people who someone attacked, stripped us of our garments of righteousness, forced themselves on us to have intercourse with foreign ideas and beliefs and to live under falsehood, things that are totally incongruent with the nature that we have been built in. Are you following now? That kind of rape of a people from their history, from the knowledge of their God and the knowledge of themselves and their own morals being destroyed, the essence of that people has been destroyed. And the natural love that they would have for each other has been destroyed when the essence is destroyed. The only way to repair it, God has to intervene in their life. And we are saying God has come in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to repair a people that have been stripped of everything. So I want you to join us for the sessions today. And we are thankful for you being out. Thank you for being patient with our check procedure. And get you a Final Call newspaper before you leave, and you can find out how you can order right to your home products from our headquarters as we have our storehouse of knowledge right there in Chicago, Illinois. You don't mind that, do you? So get you a Final Call newspaper and read the Muslim program on the back so you know exactly what we believe. You know exactly what we want. You don't have to fudge around it and keep asking a thousand questions. Most questions are answered when you read the nation's program on the back of that newspaper. So it's time to hear from other servants and helpers to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Our job is not just to try to lead in a mosque. The mosque is an incubator for the development of new leadership on our planet. 
You say, well, isn't this the new mosque? The earth is Muhammad's mosque. The entire earth. That's why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went on three world friendship tours. You talk about taking acceptance. Let me tell you something. They loved the minister when he hit them countries and he never met them people before in his life. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad promised him, brother, Allah has made friends for you all over the planet. And sure enough, he went to all those countries and there was nothing but love for him like they knew him all their life and had never seen him before. But they have seen him because they've heard of him because everybody been waiting on a man like Louis Farrakhan. And so Farrakhan is not here just to be someone that we all applaud. Farrakhan is here to build up people that the world will applaud. And so I want to bring on one that helps us right here. We seem insignificant to you, but when we're filled up with a God that's not insignificant, we got things to share with you. So I want you to join me and put your hands together for our own servant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, right here at Mosque Number 12, Brother Joseph Muhammad. Come on, let's put our hands together. Man, all praise is due to Allah. Let me open properly. Who is hot up here? <laughs> In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, we give praise and thanks to Allah for his coming and appearing to us in the personage of Master W. Fard Muhammad, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. Yes, we sir. thank him for coming and spending three and one half years among us so that he could find one that he could deposit his very mind into. And that one he found was the Georgia-born black man, born Elijah Poo, but his teacher told him, brother, you have enough of the original substance in you that I can deposit my mind in you. Mm. And so he did. And because of him, we are here today. And that man the, is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I praise be to Allah. I never, I never, as I, our profound teacher just said, I never met those first two. I didn't meet Master Fahd Muhammad, and I did not meet the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But the man who is causing me to become a more humble servant, a more humble husband, a humble father, a brother to my brother, a brother to my sister, is the man that walks among us today. He is that messianic figure that we call our illustrious leader. He's our teacher, our guide, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. Yes, it is in those three names. Praise be to Allah. I greet you all once again with the greeting words of peace of Isalamu alaikum. Dear family, um, brother know how to, <laughs> he raised that bar. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but by the grace of Allah, Allah will back me to walk through it. And I want to thank him, Student Minister Rodney, for sharing his post, because this is his house. I'm just a helper, as he stated, and I'm glad to be a little helper. No, I can't take, maybe, maybe I don't take 100 watts like the light bulbs, but I can, I do have a little light. So I thank Allah that even though I can't take that kind of waters that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has and some of the other big giants that walk in our nation, but I do have a little light. And today, I don't have necessarily a lecture. I really didn't know what I was going to say today when he said, brother, well, I need you to come up and say a few words. And all we can do is just bear witness because we can't say anything that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has not already taught us. So all we're doing is kind of walking in his shoes. Wherever his footsteps are, we follow that. So what we do is, once we get here, as our brother teaches, he said, brother, it's always good to open with some kind of Quranic verse. How about that? Do y'all mind if I read just a little bit? Because I'm a student, and you know, students follow the teacher. And I'm going to go to Surah 103, Al-Asr, the time. It says, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, by the time, surely man is in loss, except those who believe and do good and exhort one another to truth and exhort one another to patience. By the time, surely man is in loss. That's a powerful chapter because it delves right into what we go through every day in our life. We all, we, we know the Honorable Louis Farrakhan told us that we have to learn to take much. And what does that mean? The Bible says it this way, turn the other cheek. Not to unrighteousness, but to our brother and our sister. Sometimes we rub each other the wrong way. And incidentally, the little piece that I, that I did decide to give this as a name, I call it keep rising to the top. 
And believe it or not, that's a song that was written by a brother named Kenny Burke. Beautiful song. Just check it out. I mean, it's a, and the lyrics are right there with it. But I was listening to it on the way here, and I said, whoa, that's me. I, I, I can use that. Praise be to Allah. So keep rising to the top. Why? Because there are people who are going to try to keep you where you are and push you further down. As we're taught in the Nation of Islam, there's always a couple of people in the mosque or in our homes or in our families and in, in, in the places that we work that are going to try to keep us down. Their names are Brother Payne and Sister Stress. Y'all know any of them? I'm just, just, just a question. I'm just putting it out there. But if you don't, they don't necessarily have a particular face, but it's a mindset that's very pervasive among the world today. You know how we can prove it? Go out with an idea and say, you know what? I'm going to start a business. I'm going to open something up. And I'm going to make it happen. How you going to do that? Where you going to get the money from? You going to need a loan. Can you, how's your credit? Oh, no, whoa, now all of a sudden, you're my financial advisor. But it's not that they want to be a financial advisor. It's the fact that they don't see the ability in themselves to do it. So naturally, misery loves company. So they will try to inject that venom into you to discourage you from going where you want to go. But no, we're trying to rise to the top. And my sister Maya Angelou says it this way. She said, and still, I rise. Come on now, we're in a fight. And some fights are therapeutic. You know what I mean? There are some martial scientists out there that deal with, you know, block and counter. But then there are others that where we, re we redirect force, right? The energy comes towards you. If you push me, I pull you. If you pull me, I push you. So it is when we deal with people with these bad attitudes, brother pain, sister stress. Yeah, when they push us, then we pull them. Say, so, well, oh, brother, sister, did you read Surah such and such? Let's go check that out. You might like that. Or if they come to you bringing bad news about somebody else, say, well, wait a minute, hold on. Who are you talking about, brother who? Well, oh, I know where he is. Hold on for a minute. Bruh, could you come here for a minute? Listen, I'm going to be a witness. Tell him what you was just getting ready to tell me. See where we at? We redirecting the force. Don't put it on me. I can't carry it. I wasn't there when the thing that happened between the two of you happened. No, you deal with it. And I'll just be a witness. Remember, we're trying to rise to the top. Then you have this other thing that goes on with us. Envy, anger, jealousy. And check this, misunderstandings. Yeah, people envy us. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan teaches us that when someone envies you, that person can really kill you because there's something deep-rooted in the heart that when they see you, every, you know, they walk and say, every time I see that brother, he gives me a certain feeling. That sister, you know, that thing she wears, I don't like that. Her perfume don't smell right. Okay. <laughs> Here again, it is a disease that is in people. Envy. You know, uh, and then you have those that are just jealous. You get a nice car. You get a new suit. You got that house you wanted. First thing they say, they don't, they, they'll say, oh, oh, that's good. But inside, they, they're burning up. How did so-and-so get it? I should have got that. But see, this is what happens when we have a broken spirit and we don't utilize the tools that are in our spiritual toolbox. When we get like that, even if it's on us, do you know what we have to do? We have to go to prayer. Yes, you know why the prayer is so significant? Because the Quran says it this way, that were it not for our prayers, Allah wouldn't even care for us. Yes, what? You mean to tell me that if I want God's favor and I want him to know that I'm just not some cell or atom floating around in his universe, the prayer makes him notice me? Yes, you and me. So the more we pray to him, the more he knows that we are there and the more he is able to put his blessings on us. You know how you can tell, um, well, let me go this way with it. Have you ever noticed that, when, that we, when we get in trouble and you always say, man, why is this stuff always happening to me? No, 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 wait a minute. Just, just weigh it out for a minute. Why do we go through trials? Think about that. Why do we go through the vicissitudes of life? You know, that ebb and flow, that up and down. Because Allah has deposited something into us that we don't know is there, but only under tremendous trial, under pressure, can it be pulled out. That's right. So don't run from the trial. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan says, run to it. And the Quran says, and surely after difficulty comes ease. So face the difficulty. 
Because right after that, there's some, there's some ease coming. But don't get comfortable because another trial is coming. It's a never-ending cycle. And we, the more we do it, uh, there's a verse in the Quran that says, first you get a trial, then you get purification, and then there's the blessing. The trial, as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan so beautifully gave us this analogy, it's like a blacksmith. He takes a piece of iron. First he heats it. That's the trial. Then he beats it to shape it. That's the purification. Then he cools it in the water. That's the blessing. Well, that's what we go through every day in life. We're being spiritually and psychologically heated, beaten, and cooled on a regular basis. But if we're facing it and we're calling on the one God to back us and help us get through it, every time we go through it like that piece of iron, the more you take it through that process on a cellular level, it becomes tougher and tougher. And eventually what was iron becomes steel. The, one of the strongest metal, or maybe the strongest metal in the universe. So, do we want to be the man and woman of steel? Ain't that what they used to call Superman? Yes, the man of steel? Yes, well, in our spiritual and psychological constitution, that's what we can become if we allow the one God to shape us and don't run from the trial once he puts his on us. Ain't that a beautiful teaching? Yes, All praise is due to Allah. Listen to this. You know, uh, in addition to that, oh, I, I, I don't want to leave this out, the anger. Ah, that's one that's one I've been working with anger and that's why I try to be in the class on Fridays every Friday the self-improvement the basis for community development because sometimes you know I mean we you know we, we, we're human and things happen we're trying to become gods but sometimes we get angry and if we don't count to ten we'll do something <laughs> rash and the next thing you know that we, we're somewhere we, where we have no more freedom we're locked up but people can do that to us they can make us angry here again we have a prayer that we say in the nation of Islam we call it the strength prayer and I want you to focus on the first two words the first couple of words of the prayer in the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful say I seek refuge in Allah from anxiety and from grief and from lack of strength and laziness and from cowardice and niggardliness and from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. O oh Allah, suffice thou me with what is lawful to keep me away from what is prohibited and with thy grace make me free of one of what is besides thee. But let's go back to the very inception of that prayer. I seek refuge from anxiety and grief. Well, what is anxiety? These are things that come up in our mind that are real and or imagined. You know what I mean? You ever have a thought about something going to happen? It hasn't happened. It didn't happen. But you just kind of feed on it. Did you know that if we don't think good thoughts, the more we feed on that idea, somewhere in the universe, the universe is creating a situation or a circumstance to put in your path, and it's going to come to fruition. That's why we're taught at the, the Jesus, Jerusalem Slim, said it this way. As a man thinketh in his heart, or a woman, so is he. So if we think bad thoughts, what, what do we think we're going to get? We don't know how powerful our minds are. But if we think good thoughts, ah, there it is. Think on the good thoughts because we're still trying to rise to the top. Let's keep going <laughs> a little bit longer. And here there's, a, there's some others that are, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said that there's always going to be two in the mosque talking to the minister. He says there's always going to be two uh, individuals in the mosque who is always going to be there with you. Of course, we mentioned Brother Payne and Sister Stress, but then there's the hypocrite and the true believer. The minister says something once, I thought it was so profound. He said, you know what makes it hard to stay in Islam? is when you're sitting next to a hypocrite. Yeah. But he said he took it a step further. You know what makes it even harder? is when you're the hypocrite. <laughs> Woo! That was a blow right there. I mean, oh, I said, yeah. Ooh. So if you're a hypocrite, you know, check yourself. That's why the self-improvement, the basis for community development, that's our, that's our tool. That's our, that's our medicine. That's our cure for what we're going through. Why? Because self-improvement has three things that is given to us that we should utilize to help us to clear ourselves of these scourges, being a hypocrite or a disbeliever or a brother's pain and sister's stress. One, we should self-examine. That's hard. It is. It's hard to look at yourself in the mirror. 
You know how we can tell it? You ever see one of your children when they were small doing something that you didn't like? And who did you blame for it? The other parent. That's your father. That's your mother. No, no. <laughs> More than likely, that's us. Because <laughs> we don't like it. It really irritates us. And it's because it's hard to see your own self in the mirror. So self-examination. Then there's self-analysis. Let me analyze what I just did, what I just said. Yeah, let me look at me. Put it all on me. No, brother Joseph. I got to look at Joseph. What did Joseph do? I can't look at anybody else in here. If, if you wronged and I rub, you rubbed the wrong way and you ain't, that didn't want to speak to me, I gave you the greeting. I salam alaikum. You know, I was like, huh? <laughs> the Quran says that when man gives you a greeting, you return it in an equal or better, uh, like manner or better. So if I say, I salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam, give it in the same spirit. But if there was a little decrease in the, how you gave it, and it was bumped down, I was like, well, well, wait a minute. I need to go talk to brother. I need to go say something that says, let me talk to him. So the minister says it this way, that he was riding with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad one day, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would always try him. He said, this man was profound. They were in the backseat of a car leaving an event. And he said, the, the messenger looked over at him and said, uh, brother, do you know um, what the best religion for man is? And the minister said, I, I never knew how to answer him because he was so profound. He said, well, well no, sir, I, I don't. He said, brother, Prophet Muhammad said it this way. We are not truly a Muslim. We're not righteous people if we don't want for our brother and our sister what we want for ourselves. Huh? Why? Because your success is my success. That means I'll get a turn, but if I'm not happy when you're getting success, what, what's going to happen when my turn comes? Or will I even get it? Then he goes on to say, he said that Jesus, brother, said it a little bit different. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And he said, brother, did you know that that is the best religion for man? And then the minister goes on to relate to us. He said, more than likely, that problem that you're having with your spouse, with your children, and or your friend is because you did or we did or said something to them that if we had put ourselves in their shoes... We would not have liked it. Ah, that's powerful. How many of us are, you know, strong enough, have that kind of spiritual and psychological constitution that we can put ourselves on the other side before we say it? Because once it comes out, you can't pull it back. It's there. So the damage is done. So <laughs> what do we do? We have a formula for that, too. It says that before you speak, no matter how angry you are, count to 10 before you let it out. Person might be saying, I'm talking to you. Count to 10. It takes a lot because it's hard to utilize the teachings when you're angry. That is such a struggle trying to, you know, use that wisdom to focus on what's going on. But the best thing to do is to call on Allah. Say, Allah Akbar in your, to your, in your heart. Or even say it aloud. If you say it aloud, that person might just freeze and say, whoa, what was that? Allah Akbar. That's not what I was asking you. But all of a sudden, you see yourself being able to give that information you wanted to give them unimpeded, uninhibited. Why? Because the Honorable Louis Farrakhan teaches us that when we argue, the spirit of Allah leaves us. So we have nothing to build on. But if we keep Allah in, in front of us, behind us, and on both sides, all we can do is win. Yeah, because he will guide us. He is the what? He's, the book says he's the best knower. Not a good knower, not an okay knower, but he is the best knower. So if we got him working with us, if we're styled as zero, and the, what, the universe is 76 quintillion miles in diameter, well, if we are in the universe 76 quintillion miles and we are a little atom in there, we're like nothing. And nothing is always styled as a zero. But as we're taught, any time a zero is moved to the left side or behind, I mean a one is moved to the left side or behind a zero, you have 10. You ever multiply anything by 10? You ever get a good result after that? Yes, yeah, sure, certainly you did. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. The one God has to be in our life and helping us to move forward so that we can have the success and rise to the top. Did you know that there are some things that we need to put in our spiritual toolbox that are absolutely necessary for those of us who are followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his teaching? I know I had that written down somewhere. Oh, here we go. One of the things that we need in our toolbox is 
Message to the Black Man in America. Have you ever read that? If not, get a copy. Put it on your, if you don't have a library, start your library. But in it, regardless of if you're male or female, there are things in there that can help us get through some of the difficulties that we face in life. How about Brother Rodney just read from Torchlight for America? What other author has ever written anything like that about abortion, about women, and how the woman has to be treated in order for us to have a powerful and successful nation? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that a nation can rise no higher than his woman. So the woman needs the best education. Why? Because the first doctor, first nurse, first teacher is mama. Huh? The minister says that a baby don't know nothing about Allah or God. But when a baby cries, eh, mama answers the call. That's God to the baby. <laughs> so the baby said, so and what about when we were small and we fell and got hurt? Maybe daddy was at work. Maybe he was, maybe he was around. Maybe he was at work and he couldn't help you. You skinned your knee up. You got your elbows all banged up. Your head got banged up. Who bandaged you? Who kissed you and said, baby, it's going to be all right? Mama. Huh? And she nursed you. Yes. That's why when, the, when, the, when the, uh, the companions asked Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, dear, dear holy apostle, who do we honor first? He said, mother. And after that, mother. And after that, mother. Then the fourth time, who? Father. But three times before father, mother. Shows you the beauty and the significance of the woman. Yes, that's why the minister told us as men, he said, brothers, don't play with women because women are nothing to play with. No, 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 because if she's the second self of God, she preceded the sun, the moon, and the stars. I mean, God was first, but his second, the second act of creation was you, the woman. Yeah, you were right there helping as a co-creator with Allah. Yes. So no, you never have to walk behind. You come on up here with me, baby. We're going to walk through this, <laughs> and we get through it. Brothers, y'all remember when we was in school, we was playing sports and stuff? Who did we call on when we uh, had, had problems with our tests? You know, we had to take that test, and we needed that homework done, that paper done. We always found a sister that knew how to do that, right? I said, could, could you, can you help me with this? I got you. Yeah, and she did, and she answered the call. How about when we got in trouble? Like, Mama, <laughs> I, need, I, need some, I need a couple of dollars. Boy, you know I ain't got no money. But then she'll go and pull out that old funny-looking bag or box or whatever it was. And you're like, Mama, get that from. Obviously, there's a God for us there. She had it, and she answered the prayer. First doctor, first nurse, first teacher is Mama, is the woman. Because, brothers, don't women teach us? Well, if you haven't dealt with one, just deal with one. You'll you see what I'm talking about. <laughs> there's a lesson to be learned and you will learn it just keep dealing with them you know hopefully in a respectful way but there's always a teaching and sometimes it seems like the acidic conversation oh sisters y'all know y'all can get some, some acid y'all can burn a man <laughs> don't burn him too bad the honorable Louis Farrakhan said you know if you, if you cut him up too bad the only thing you can do now is cut him up put him in a frying pan and eat him because he ain't going to be no good to you <laughs> Don't cut him too bad, you know, but stay on him to keep him sharp. Yes. Come, no, really, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not putting this down, brother. I'm really lifting this up. Yes, but I'm showing you the value of the woman. Yes, she's a trial, Help me. but to a real man, real men don't run from trials. Right. Right. We face trials. Right. We weather the storm. Yes. We hold our post. General Order number five said, quit your post only when properly relieved. I ain't been relieved yet. And from what I understand in the nation of Islam, you're not relieved until you get a box and they say them seven minutes and they put you in the dirt. That's when we're relieved. So no, so we stay the course. So what kind of sailor would I be? And I was one once upon a time if I can only sail on calm waters. What about when there's high winds and rough seas? Huh? Can I weather that? That's how I prove I'm a sailor. That's how I prove I'm a real man. That's how I prove I'm moving into Godship because I can face the difficulty of what's in my own house. That's right. Woo! They say confession is good for the soul. Sometimes my wife get me sometimes. I just say to her, I say, you know what? You just helped my subject today. I go, I say, you know what? That's beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much. All praise is due to Allah. She'll look at me and be like, 
you know what, you play too much. I said, nah, I'm not playing. I'm using a little levity family, but it's, real, it's really, we, deal, we talk from life experiences up here. So I'm going to, a few more things in, the phys, in, in our uh, toolbox. Torchlight for America, restrictive laws of Islam, our provisional constitution, the national agenda, self-improvement study, guys, got to have those. Why? Because self-improvement is the basis for community development. Right. Yes, on our block, in our neighborhood, yes, but we are an arrangement of systems, which is like a community. We've got to get this together first. I've got to get me together before I can help anybody. I can't help you until I know I got my stuff together. Did you know that an EMT is not allowed to provide medical attention to anyone without asking them this question? Can I help you? If you don't ask that first, anything after that, you're liable for it. But if that person gives you the okay, you can go ahead on and work with them. And so that's where we are. So if Allah says, can I help you? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, I need help, sir. <laughs> Please help me. But sometimes the help that we think that, that he gives us doesn't come the way we want it, you know? We want that easy, kind of soft, you know, cushiony kind of help. That ain't how God worked. Why? Because that's not how he came in. I'm going to bring you the same way I came. Did you know it took him two trillion years just to get his mind straight? We believe, that this, as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as it was given to him by Master Fard Muhammad, our universe is 76 trillion years old. But it took two trillion years for him just to arrange his thoughts so that he could learn to calculate time. Really, two trillion is just a number that was given to us. It might have been longer than that. But imagine being the first one. He chose the form that we have now. There, there was no form before him. He gave us the form. And then he decided, well, I, I hate darkness. I'm going to make some light. But not before I make my woman. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Not before her. <laughs> See, the enemy of this world says that the dog is his best friend. No, not us. My woman and the God that I pray to is my best friend, regardless of who or what. <laughs> no. She, her, come on now. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not an animal hater. I like, I like dogs, you know, and all that stuff, but not before my woman. No, sir. Okay, <laughs> there's one more. Our Savior has arrived. This is the one by Brother Jabril, the religion of Islam, and Farrakhan, the travel, traveler, by Minister Jabril. Those are just some of the things that we need in our toolbox. But the greatest thing that we can have is the knowledge of the man who is in our midst today who is reminding us of what it is that we are supposed to be doing, and that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He imparts to us the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in such a very beautiful and eloquent way. And he's such a magnificent teacher. You know, if you look on Facebook and social media today, everybody wants a following. Reminds me of something in the official guide to the ministry. In the official guide to the ministry of the Nation of Islam, these words are quoted by Master Fard Muhammad. He says that if you teach anything, somebody will follow you. Take that over. So look at people on social media. Man, I got, I got 1,500 followers. I got 15,000 followers. But what are you teaching them? Are you teaching them anything that can lift them from the wretched condition that they are in right now? No, no. And are you leading them to avenues of instructions and information that they can go look at themselves and come out with something great? No. But if you check the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, he has never given us any information without giving us an avenue to go back and research it ourselves. He is the master teacher with students before him. So, it's, 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 so the saying goes that if a man is trying to teach you something and it doesn't lead you to a book, that man is trying to make you his slave. They get over, family. Real talk. Real talk. And everybody wants slaves. That's what this following thing is about on, on social media. It has nothing to do with me trying to help that person trying to help somebody. They just want to know that somebody want to listen to them. Because, you know, everybody suffers from low self-esteem. And they need validation from other people. How about validation from the God himself? Allah will validate you. And as we're taught, if Allah lifts you up, who can bring you down? But if man lifts you up, he's really putting you down. So I think I'd rather lean with Allah. I'll let him lift me. Because I don't want to be brought down. As a matter of fact, I want to keep rising to the top. All praise is due to Allah. So in the self-improvement study guide, as I close it out uh, very quick, because I want to bring my brother on, it says, um, 
a question number six on this Friday that just passed. We're asked a question after going through study guide 19A. This question is what the study guide is all about. Who is God? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that is the most profound question that anybody could ever ask. It's like a child who has never, don't know his father. He goes to his mother and says, Mama, who, who's my daddy? I want to know what made me. And certainly Mama, you know, she might want to hide it for whatever reason. She might not want to give it to him right there. But as he grows, she'll share with him, boom, so and so is the case. Thus and so is the case. But the most profound question we can ask is, who is God? So we're nearing the end of this uh, study guide. 19a and question number six asks this have you been inspired by studying this message and then the compound that follows it is in what way i personally have been inspired by the study guide which incidentally if i could let me just go back just a little bit the honorable minister louis farrakhan in 1985 came before the world and told the world that my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is alive. Now, he lost a lot of friends. He lost a lot of people that were in the mosque at that time with, that were with him. He has never backed up off that statement. Not once. As a matter of fact, he's moved harder, drove more and more into it, and proved it at no limit of time. But in that vision-like experience, he had a vision-like experience that he went to this great ship that's... Um, called the mother plane. It is a, a man-made vehicle that was made on this planet on the island of Nippon by Master Fard Muhammad. We're taught that he started it in 1909. It was completed in 1929. And he said he got the wisest scientists from all over the earth to come and work on it. Because he was so wise and his mind was so far ahead of theirs. Let me put it this way, he's God. He's born of a woman, sisters, a man born of a woman. But the thing that differs from him than us is that he has knowledge, wisdom, power, and understanding, or understanding and power to execute and bring into existence anything that he wills. So on the island of Nippon, he got all those scientists there, gave them the schematics. They were all building a different part. They didn't know what it was because they had never seen schematics like that before. Then in 19... 29, he lifted it. It's a half mile by a half mile. That means it's a half mile thick, a half mile wide, and it's shaped like the universe. He said that it has the ability, well, let me put it this way. He's, the color of it is beryl, which is a bluish green with rainbows in it. However, it is so powerful, it has the ability to go in two directions at one time. Y'all weigh that one. <laughs> weigh that, y'all weigh that. Go ahead on. And then it has 1,500 little planes on it. Baby planes. They call them UFOs. We call them IFOs. We know who's on there. They are people. But we don't have to be afraid. Yes, all praise is due to Allah. They are us. That's Master Fard Muhammad. So when the minister said that I had a vision-like experience and I've saw, I got there, he said the pilot picked him up, took him there, back the plane in back because he knew that if he had showed it to him from that great height that he went up, it would have frightened him. So he backed it, docked it inside the docking bay, and he said that um, he knew he was there, but he never saw the pilot. But anyway, it was in a room, and he said as he was in that room, he heard the voice from a speaker in that room of his teacher the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, like I had heard it all the years that he was with me, talking to me up close. And it rolled down, he said, and as he talked to me, a scroll rolled down, which is the focal point of where I'm going. He said it was in cursive writing. I looked at it, and then it rolled back up. I couldn't get it all. I don't want to go into all of that because I'm dealing with the scroll. So that next year from 85 in 1986, the minister started with these self-improvement study guides. Now, Brother Joseph, and so you might agree with me, personally believe that what he read in that scroll, some of that was the self-improvement study guys. And he came back and he got student minister Ava Muhammad, where he had a team that was working on that, but he got her to do it and to, to write it up because her mind was so in tune with his. She knew how to put everything the way he, way he wanted it. And she said these words to us, we never had to edit any of his words. Weigh that one. 
Not one sentence, all of them. He said, the way he said it is the way we wrote it. So those study guys are what we're feeding on right, right now. Who is God? And what those study guys have done for me, again, it has caused me to be a better brother, a better husband, a better father, just overall a better person. Now, I'm not all the way there yet, and I got to borrow from that Christian pastor that I might not be what I'm supposed to be, but I sure ain't what I used to be. I'm just saying. I mean, that's just, that's just my all praise is due to a lot. So, dear family, he's the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is so magnificent. I've never met him in person, but I don't have to. I've never seen the mother plane, but I don't have to. Why? He said he saw it. He said it's real. I believe him. That's all I need. And if I do see it, <laughs> all praise is due to Allah. But I'm still working with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, don't pray to see the wheel because if you see it, it's coming for destruction. It's coming to take this enemy out, the one that's had us under his foot all these years. Allah is coming to destroy it. He said, no foreign power is ever going to uh, drop a bomb on America. America is a preserved country and a preserved land for Allah himself, Master Fard Muhammad. So dear family, I thank Student Minister Rodney for allowing me to come forward. There's so much more I want to say, but I got to be respective of time. We have something in the Nation of Islam called lawful and deliberative dialogue. I hope that I've been part of something that made sense to you. If it didn't, don't charge it to my heart, charge it to my head. So, dear family, I thank you again for the time that I've been given. May Allah bless you all with light of understanding, peace, and love as we walk through this valley of the shadow of death. As-salamu alaykum. All right, brother. Oh, let me bring back to the roster my Delaware student regional minister, Rodney Muhammad. Assalamu alaykum. All praise is due to Allah. Come on, let's give him another big hand. That's Brother Joseph Muhammad. Always here, always willing to help always growing.